Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we're going to take a close look at this handheld game system. It's a hybrid device that can play Sega Genesis games or Mega Drive games, but you can use it as a portable device, but also plug in two controllers and use it on your television with an HDMI functionality. <laughs> This crazy thing comes even with 118 different games built in, so I do wonder what kind of games. They are claiming having a 4.3 big screen, you know, that makes no sense those things, 2 player HD output and of course a 2000 milliamp big power. Yeah, I have no idea what it is, big power. Alright, so let's do a quick unboxing and see what we're getting with this. Because it's always the question, is it any good? Particularly when it comes to the Sega Genesis, because the overall, let's say, emulation or the way how these things work, don't have the best overall emulation or at least kind of an emulation performance. So there's some screen protector or something kind of at the front because this thing looks kind of weird. Yep, there we go. But the overall quality feels kind of legit. One of the things I really love about this already is that having the Y and Z button on top. And both of them have like this trigger thing going on and it's absolutely feeling great. So the D-pad, the same thing. It's not the same the D-pad like the controllers, but this thing does have a very nice touch. A, B, X, Y, select start and the reset button. At the bottom, we're finding all of the connection to for just a normal, let's say, controller. And what is interesting, these things are wireless, so they're automatically connect to this. Yeah, it will indicate player two or player one, but we'll show this later on, how and how is the quality itself. But at the bottom part, we do have more functionality. Over here, having the different regions. Over here, you can switch between the OG or the NP over here. So it's kind of interesting. So with these, let's say, European and Japan and American, let's say, different games, you can actually play everything on this so far. And later on, we're also going to be testing different kind of cartridges. And it seems to be like the Joy. I'm guessing this is the joystick that you can turn on and off if you want to use the wireless or the original connection. Volume control and headphone check out. At the bottom we're finding the mono speaker, so I'm curious how this will overall sound. And here, just a normal battery. These are the batteries that you can find on all kinds of devices. And the coding is the 1800650, so you can even upgrade it to a big one if you want to. Nothing has been soldered in, so this is absolutely great. So you can replace it fairly easy if the battery is completely drained out. And at the top, we're finding the on and off switch over here. The Ray mentioned the two shoulder buttons. They have the input a micro USB, so that's quite unfortunate. I wish they went for the Type-C, HDMI out and AV out. So you can even plug this thing into a CRT. And yeah, and that's a front facing where having everything already dis discussed about. So beside that, yeah, it was quite an interesting, let's say, overall configuration and you can do a lot of things with this. Okay, but however, with the controllers, yeah, this is a different story. So these things feel kind of lightweighted, of course, because there was no rumble function whatsoever. The first thing and the interesting thing is, is going to be the wicked test with the smithing. Ooh, ooh, smell chemical, but I do like it. <laughs> Nevertheless, what we're having is the select start, the A, B, X, Y, but the controls are feeling very horrible quality. And the same goes for this wiggly joystick. It's a similar one, like the six bot the control of the original Sega, but you can just feel that it is feeling really cheap. So the controller itself, I find it disappointing already. AAA batteries is going to be needed, two of them. And yeah, how long they will give you playing time i have no idea there was no information about that and also depending what kind of batteries you're using because that will make a massive difference okay so in here let's see the toilet paper manual deluxe let's see if it even comes in english there he is with some overview what you can actually do with it and how and what uh, and here having the built-in game list yep the games are sky zone roman and all like crappy homebrew games Nothing like official, let's say they didn't put any, let's say, official license game on there. And then the HDMI in the micro USB. But somehow we do have AV out function, but this isn't, the cable is not in there. So, okay. That is also a very big disappointment. But let's take a close look at the device itself. Oh man, it's reflective and my camera doesn't like that. But powering it on. Yeah, oh, oh crap. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, this is going to be the thing you're getting, is the widescreen craziness. So I do wonder what they mean on the box saying... Big screen, 4x3. This makes no sense whatsoever, seriously. Like, you can reset it, but that's it. Does have an indication of the battery, two stripes over here. Of the four, so we have 50% battery life. But with a weird situation. 
Okay, so I need to turn this to a certain location and then we can use the controls and switching it in here, we're having the controls or the external controls. Okay, there's an interesting way and a choice how they want to use this device. The volume itself, it's okay. I can tell you that it's okay. But let's get into the games and let's see what we're having when it comes to Roadman. Yeah, you know, that kind of weird stuff is on here. The display itself, it's okay. This is not a beautiful IPS display that I've seen in previous handhelds. So for the money, I find it also disappointing because I wish they went for an IPS panel. But particularly because you do pay a lot of money for this. Let's go into reset. This is like of a puzzle game. The final fighter. That sounds kind of exciting. But I can tell you it's not going to be any exciting whatsoever. It's also going to be the craziness. And these are exactly the games, like the 8-bit games that we have seen of those Famicom clones. Yeah. So let's move on to, let's say, not the building game, because they are overall like really bad. I just wanted to see how the overlation or gameplay is when it comes to original cartridges. I do wonder with this device, this is going to be the Sega Nomad like killer, or is it going to be the replacement? That is of course one of the things I'm basically looking into this video. Okay, so the first thing is like how will the cartridges fit in here? So the dust cover is thin plastic, you can see that it's bent a little bit when you're going to be pushing it in, but just wanted to say that at first. So let's click it in and let's see. Uh, it does click in perfectly, let's get it out. There's an original cartridge of course. Oh man. Just wiggle it a little bit, but it's okay, it's okay. So next thing, we're going to have like a homebrew game, some Chinese clone thing. All right, we get out a little bit easier. Uh, let's grab a Mega Drive or an Ever Drive thing, same thing. So if you're going to be combining this, it would be like the ultimate device. You can play actually so far almost everything beside 2D2 Wix. And of course, let's see, can we use this with the Xeno Crisis also, like starting off with that game. See, that clicks in perfectly. Okay, you don't need to be careful, you don't need to be afraid or being careful that you're going to be bumping it. That's something I'm going to be testing out. Let's power it on. Does it boot up? Bit my bureau. There we go. Oof, that doesn't sound that great. Let's clean up the display. Let's see what happens. Okay. Hmm. So if you're going to be bumping it, it's not going to be a problem whatsoever. So that's absolutely great. Okay, I do wonder is like how does this actually play? So it's not the most comfort comfortable device that I've seen, but Okay, that's kind of funny. So it recognizes the six button configuration. Okay, this is a very strange way to play. You need to get used to this, but so far it seems to be working just fine. Okay. I can tell you that's quite comfortable to play this thing. Haha. <laughs> ah. But the configuration of the button is completely strange because normally you are using the four beat the AB the A B C X for actually yeah, navigating the character to shoot in, shoot in a certain direction. Now you need to search which button you need to choose. <laughs> no. But let's try a different game and let's see how that runs. Okay, so what is actually a major problem with these devices is that virtual racing with the special chip in here doesn't mean recognized by the system. Let's double check. We can put it on PAL to be sure over here. Okay, so let's reset it. Maybe this is the... No, this is not the case at all. You know, that's the problem with these things. We don't have any special ways to play these virtual racing games besides having, I think, an original Sega Nomad. Okay, so next up, let's try out the Sonic 3 Knuckles. And yep, it does recognize multi-combination cartridges. So this is absolutely great. Okay, it sounds completely off. And this is something to do. Okay, you can see a lot of glitching going on. That this have to do do of the problem with the region we're having over here. So we need to set it to the... Let's see if there's going to be any improvement over there. But I can tell you already that the audio is not like it's supposed to be. Nope. Oh, that works so much better. 
so you need to be careful with the region stuff but you can just hear the audio not do 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 no it doesn't sound like it's supposed to be but when it comes to let's say the gameplay itself is not by itself no 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 so that sounds kind of weird what i love about this is the, the d-pad feels very responsive yeah no problem there so when it comes to this this is absolutely great i already noticed when wiggling this machine with the two cartridges can sometimes give a problem but hmm. did have a problem that it reset it before but so far no problem whatsoever so when it comes to the gameplay and the multi card which is or at least multiple let's say card which is imp implemented yeah, this seems to be working just fine all right so we do have the message so this is a great indication to see if this thing actually works with different regions so let's put this thing on the pole let's give it a reset and let's see if it's going to be booting up and there we go so when it comes to the region it seems to be working just fine uh, the only thing I just wanted to see if this D-pad is compatible with fighting games. So this is not going to be any problem whatsoever because I love to play shmups and fighting games. As many of you know. And if you don't know, now you know. Alright, so let's see if the, yeah, the six button has been configured. Yeah, the D-pad is perfect for, for fighting games. Absolutely great. Recording for this thing is going to be difficult due of let's say the display that is in here, but yeah, this is great man, absolutely. Let's see where is my kick. There we go. So when it comes to the overall performance of the D-pad, I am very surprised. And I can tell you pleasantly surprised. Go away, Zangief. There we go. Woo! So when it comes to also the card which is like Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 2, this seems to also be working great. So the next thing I was wondering is like, can we actually use the effort drive? But somehow, let's push the SD in, let's push this thing in, it fits in very well, but somehow it doesn't do anything. That's kind of weird. Alright, so let's plug this thing out. Let's blow it. And let's see if that helped. Normally I never need to blow this thing, but nope. It seems to be that an EverDrive is not compatible with this thing. Then is the next question, how is it when it comes to a multi-game card? Okay, that's interesting that also the multi-game cards don't boot up. Normally they will always boot up and having no problem whatsoever. So let's put it in a different region. If this has any effect, we do have the blue screen now, but this is very strange. What the heck is going on? That is absolutely one huge disappointment that we don't have the option for an EverDrive or putting in a multi-game card. Okay, so another weird thing is going on over here. So here you can just see you having the message that this thing doesn't is supported for the Pulse system. That has been set to, okay. So I was thinking, you know what? So it has been set to Japan and the NTSC, but let's put in an O. And let's see what happens. Let's turn it on off. I think that is going to be working so much better. So it's kind of a hassle when you're going to be messing around with the different, let's see, regions sometimes, especially with the homebrew one. But the reason I wanted to check this out, I just wanted to check it out if this overall, let's see, gameplay is great and how is the music of Street of Rage? Because that's one of those music I can just stream, man. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you already that. It is not like it's supposed to be. Particularly listening to the audio. You can just like the weird sound effects you normally hear only in the background. They're quite loud now. So when it comes to that. No, this is not the best overall experience. Okay, so let's move on to the television. Let's pause this thing. Let's plug it in and let's see what happens. If you're going to be plugging this thing into your television or HDMI monitor. Because it doesn't matter. If it has an HDMI port, you can just plug it in. And you can just see how bad the display is. <laughs> it's really bad. 
I just wanted to see what happens if you're going to be plugging this thing straight into your monitor. And it goes a little bit of an ape shit when it comes to the display itself, but then after, let's say, a couple of seconds, it will automatically get into, let's say, the TV out mode. So we don't need to reset it. And to give you an example, this thing just have a green screen. Just gonna plug it out. Let's see what happens if you're going to be doing that. And it goes back to the handle itself, or do we actually need to have a reset? Yeah, I can tell you that it doesn't really like what I'm doing over here. So let's plug this thing back in. And let's see if it goes back to the display again. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't work anymore. So, oh, no, 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 it does go there. Oh. Now you can just actually hear how bad it is. Oh, 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 that audio, my ears are bleeding. This is really bad. But let's take a close look at the controls. And the way how this actually works is quite genius. So if you're going to be slapping the batteries in, there is no on and off switch. You need to use the Play 1 or the P1 and it automatically connects. You know the switch that we have, although machine itself, we don't need to actually use it because here you can just see, I'm can, I can just actually use the controls on here and the wireless. So I already mentioned before, it's like the controls feel really cheap and this is not a pleasant experience. But I do wonder when it comes to, let's say, plugging in the controller. So let's check out what happens if you're going to be plugging in a controller itself. And I mean, when it comes to an original controller, you can also hear there is an interference throughout, let's say, the HDMI connection. So let's plug in the original controller. And do you know what's kind of funny? It's like we didn't disable the one on the system itself. So we can just use the wireless version. We can use the one on the system itself. The only thing I did notice, like we use the D-pad without any problem, but the only bin button that is configured is my super button. Okay, so let's see what happens if you're going to be plugging this thing into in different mode. So we disabling this. No, that doesn't help anyway. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the controller itself. Oh, it's the controller itself. Oh. <laughs> That's an epic fail, absolutely. Wicked epic fail. I need to change, I need to clean the controller. Okay, but the conclusion is basically we can use this. Doesn't matter what kind of controller, you can just plug it in, use the wireless version, everything seems to be working. You don't need to disable one on the handheld itself. I just want to share this moment with you that Wicked is going to be naughty and breaking the seal. Wait, Wicked, ah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, let's remove the four screws over here and open it up. Just doing a quick peek in the inside what this thing is actually running on. Uh, yeah, this is... Oh, there we go. There was still one left. I'm always, like, forgetting one. But these things are super easy to tear down. Already shown you that the battery can be replaced. That's absolutely a big positive thing about it. But let's check out if we can just crack it open like that. Or... Oh, that screw has been removed. Sometimes we do have this issue that some of the screws still being in there... Is giving us an issue all right okay so there we go also need to be very gentle because there are so many wires like sold into all kinds of but what the heck is going on with this thing holy crap this is absolutely nuts can i even open this thing normally yeah no this is the best i can get i think because of everything it's just an interesting way to get a sneak peek in the inside you can just see how they made the pcb that's quite interesting it's more like, look at this. It looks like there is like an, an, a cartridge-based thing that they just sold into this. Over here we have two cables going to the tiny PCBs for the shoulder buttons with the membranes. That's the reason why this thing has such a nice overall, let's say, feel. It comes with a 1 watt 8 ohm, let's say, tiny speaker. And that's it, you know. It's a very crazy you know like there's not a lot of information on this only over here some markings that's it you know fbh that's like the numbering of it so it seems to be this thing is produced in 2021 you're having the battery cables but it is quite difficult to like remove this thing or i need to remove these let's say pcbs I'm guessing if you can't find anything here, there will not be in a lot of information. But yeah, one thing is for sure, they sanded off a lot of information over here. This is one of the chips that normally gives us more information. There's only says over here GT208. 
But that's it, you know. I'm just going to leave it at this because I'm going to completely ripping it apart and going to be destroying this thing. And that's absolutely a waste. I think it's safe to say at this point that this is not an overall great experience. Yeah, it's cool that we have all kinds of regions that we can play with this thing. So this can actually play all your retro, like say, Sega games. But what's going on with, like say, not having any multi-game card booting up or like my EverDrive? Maybe with a different version that does boot up, but so far I've tested, no results. And yeah, when it comes like, say, the resolution, I've been looking into it. Maybe you have a combination of having... A combination where you can change out the special ratio or something going on i have seen it before but this is not the case so far i have seen yeah the building battery is great that you can replace it that's absolutely that's just amazing but this h the hg 943 from fiho this is the brand i have reviewed a couple of those let's say sega clones and they are like this similar problems and i think this is something we have seen many times before however it's kind of cool that we have all kinds of games to play with. Let me know in the comments, do you think this thing would be like your Nomad replacement? Because those Nomad Sega things with an IPS panel are super expensive now. And maybe like to triple, triple the price of this device. Nevertheless, thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing. And it would be great to see you in the next video.